Cavalcade of America. Starring Irene Dunn in Citizen Mama. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening, this is Bill Hamilton. Tonight, the DuPont Cavalcade comes to you from the beautiful Kleinhans Music Hall in Buffalo, New York, where the 25th anniversary of the birth of DuPont Cellophane is being celebrated. On this cavalcade, we present one of Hollywood's brightest stars and one of America's most distinguished citizens, Irene Dunn. Miss Dunn will portray the character of Mama, which she made famous in the motion picture success, I Remember Mama. In our original radio play, Citizen Mama, daughter Katrin tells of further adventures of Mama and the Hanson family. remember San Francisco and the house where I was born. I remember the fogs rolling up the hills from the bay and the sound of boat whistles never stopping. I remember the girls I grew up with and all our neighbors there on Steiner Street. And I remember Niels, my big brother, and my little sister Dagmar, and of course, Papa. But most of all, when I think back on those days... Most of all, I remember Mama. Catherine, Dogmar, Papa, Nick, yeah, yeah. supper is on the table. Yeah, yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, How come. can you be, Dagmar, with all that bread and butter and sugar you just ate? Well, I don't eat much now, do I, Papa? Only one meal a day, all day long. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good to watch people eat. <laughs> Only sometimes I wish we could eat the dishes, too. Guess who washes the dishes at Alice Jordan's house, Mama? Mr. Jordan. Hmm. Well, it's not the way I was brought up to run the house. Oh, Alice says her mother says that's the way Americans do things. I hate Mrs. Jordan, and I hate Alice Jordan. And, oh, especially I hate her snippy little brother, Tommy Jordan. I hate him. A dog, Ma. It's not a nice way to talk. I mean it, Mama. I hate Tommy. But did he do something bad to you? He keeps calling me a Scandahoovian, and I can't stand it. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Your parents come from Norway, Dogma. But Tommy told everybody I shouldn't be the Statue of Liberty, Mama. Well, what has the Statue of Liberty got to do with things? I'm it. Our teacher picked me. We're going to act out a wonderful play all about history. It's called Sam and Sandra Meet Their Uncle Sam. And you're to act a statue, Pa? I know it already, too, Mama. I am Liberty. I hold my torch high for the whole world to see. Why doesn't Tommy want you to be the statue, Dagmar? He's jealous because he's only the Louisiana Purchase. Oh, oh, well. He told everybody in the playground, practically, I shouldn't be the Statue of Liberty because it's American and I was Scandahoovian. Oh, well, now, you are not to my names, Dogmar. You are just as much American as Tommy Jordan, born here, same as him. I told him so, too. Then Tommy said his father said that you and Papa aren't citizens. He said his father tried to get you to vote or something in some election or something... And you couldn't because you weren't citizens. Is that true, Mama? Yeah, that is true, Dogmar. Oh, why aren't you a citizen, Papa? Well, it's, it's, it's not important for grown-ups, Dagmar. Tommy says the government won't let you. Oh, no, it's not true, Dogmar. Only first, Papa must take out what they call the second papers. Then Papa and I will be citizens just as much as Mr. and Mrs. Jordan. When are you going to get this, this paper, Papa? Oh, soon. Soon. Gee, you've been saying that since I was smaller than Dagmar, Papa. Now, Nils, Nils, it's not up to you what Papa does. Papa's always been so busy making money for the family. He's had no time to get the citizenship papers. Well, I wasn't criticizing. I don't blame Papa. I wouldn't want to go to night school either. You mean Papa would have to go to school to be a citizen? Well, naturalization school, they call it. School? Papa! <laughs> There's nothing funny about that, Dogma. Would Papa have to bring home a report card? <laughs> it is school for grown-ups, Dogma. Everyone who comes from the old country almost goes there. Oh, I wish you'd do it right away, Papa. Will you please? Please. 
Well, all right, I do it. I do it soon, Dagmar. Oh, do it now, Papa, please. I want to show that Tommy Jordan who's a Scandahoovian. I remember when supper was over and the dishes were washed, Dagmar would feed her pets, and Nils would go to his room and do his homework. I took piano lessons and had to practice every night. This was the only time of the day Mama would ever stop working. While I played, she and Papa would sit in the kitchen and drink coffee and just talk. Oh, it's good the way Catherine plays that folk song now. Yeah, yeah. I love to say among the hills sweet with clover their lots are fine in their buckles gay with jacket button silver over. I never, never forget time you sing that song at the same time I'm asking your father if I can marry you. Remember, Martha? Yeah, Lars. I was standing in the kitchen. I could hear every word you and Papa were saying. Oh, yes, your father was saying, you mean. I was too afraid to say one word. Oh, I still get nervous when I think of listening. That's why I start to sing that time, so I cannot hear what you and Papa say. Oh, it's a good thing you did, Martha, or I would not have had courage to ask him yet. Oh, it's awful to be so shy as I, Martha. I think I'm going to die right on the spot. And then I hear you, and I think how much I love you, and somehow I find words. Always I have been glad you did, Lars. Sometimes I think I'm not good enough for you. Oh, you are best man, I know. And that's plenty good enough for all married women like me. Yes, but it's not good. I bring shame on the children. I should be American citizen, so? Well, I like if you were, Lars. Children should not feel different from other children. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah, I know. know. Couldn't you try the night school just once more? It would make the children very happy. Oh, I would like it, Martha. And not just for Niels and Katrin and Dagmar. For you and me, too. America is a fine country. I would like us to be citizens. Lars, you already have first papers. Three times already I have first papers. Yeah, but the last ones have not run out yet. You have only to get your second papers and it's all over. Oh, only? Oh, yeah, no. Oh, won't you try? Just once more, Lars. Maybe you'll get teacher this time you feel at home with. Just once more, Lars. Try it. I don't know where I ever get a teacher I feel good with. But I try it once more if it make you happy. Oh, it does, Lars. Where is everybody? Mm. Is nobody home? It's Uncle Chris. Mom! Now, say here. nothing of the night school to him, Marty. He's a big talker in yeah, York where yeah. your uncle is. Yeah. I never hear the end of it. No, no, don't him. worry. I won't say a word. Hello, Martha. Hello, Uncle Chris. Hello, Uncle. Dagmar says you are going to be a schoolboy again. A little schoolboy, huh, lass? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Chris is so funny. Dagmar, it's time for bed. Go now. I want to stay here with Uncle no, no, Chris. No, no, no. Go now. No, I say, Dagmar, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's something make you sleep better. Nickel. Thanks, Uncle Chris. Go now. Mama. Yes, what is it now? Do you know what the torch of liberty is? It's the janitor's flashlight. Good night. <laughs> Good, Good night. night. Good night, Good night Mama. Uh, Now, Martha, you bring me and Lars drink, and we celebrate Lars is old enough to go to school. <laughs> Uncle Chris, it's not kind of you to make fun of Lars. He cannot help that he is shy with strangers any more than you can help that you have loud voice. What is wrong to laugh at people when they're funny? For a grown man to be afraid to go to school is funny. It... Little Dagmar is not afraid of father is. That's funny, so <laughs> I laugh. School is wrong to even think of, Martha. I could never do it. Of course you can, No, Lars. no, no. We forget the whole thing. I go now and get drink for Uncle Chris. Oh, now see what you did. No wonder they call you the Black Norwegian. You are a big bully, Uncle Chris. I am not bully. I am head of family. You were not nice to Lars. It is better you style laugh at Lars than strangers laugh. At school, he used to make fool of himself. We will see, Uncle Chris. We will see. I 
I remember when I came home from school the next afternoon, I could hardly believe my eyes. Mama was sitting down reading a book. She was always too busy for reading. Oh, Catherine. What are you reading, Mama? Well, it's World Almanac Neil gets for Christmas. Oh, that. Where is Dogma? Oh, she came home with me. She's out in the backyard playing with some other little girls. Uh oh. Sounds like Tommy is there, too. I wish those kids would leave Dagmar alone. Catherine, I must go downtown for a little while. You look after Dagmar and the house. Where are you going, Mama? Well, I cannot tell you now, Catherine. Later, maybe. I couldn't imagine where Mama was going. She was so mysterious about it. Yes, lady? You are Naturalization Bureau? Yes. My husband is, is named Lars Hansen. He is from Norway. He's a fine carpenter. He wishes to become American citizen. Very well. The first thing your husband has to do, Mrs. Hansen, is to fill out a declaration of his intent to become a citizen. Yes. You may have heard that called the first paper. My husband has already taken out his first papers three times. I see. Well, then, before he can become a citizen, he must live in the United States for at least five years. Oh, my husband has already lived here longer than that. Sixteen years. Oh. Then at least two years must elapse between the time he files his declaration of intent and the time he can take his examination for citizenship. Oh, it's over two years already since my husband took out his first paper. It's two years... Five days. In that case, he can be given an examination, and if he's approved, he becomes a citizen. Yeah. Now, please, what is this examination like? Well, it's very simple. The alien has to prove to the examiner that he can speak English. Oh, my husband speaks fine English. That he can write his name. Oh, my husband writes fine hand. And he has to show attachment to the principles of the Constitution. Oh, my husband... Oh, yes, I see. Yeah, well, they'll teach him everything he needs to know in naturalization school. Well, may I ask a question for myself, please? Ask anything you like, lady. When my husband becomes citizen, I become citizen too, so? Automatically. And I do not have to go to school or take examinations, so? That's what I meant by automatic. Where do I fill out the paper to become citizen? You don't, lady. Your husband does. But you do not understand. I wish to go to school, take examination, and become citizen first before my husband. Then he will become automatic citizen. So? It ain't so, lady. It just ain't so. But if I become citizen when husband does, why cannot he become citizen when I do? It, the law says you're what your husband is, not vice versa. That's the law. Oh, but my husband wants to be citizen very much. Then he'll have to take the examination like anybody else, himself, in person. Is that good and clear? It's clear, yeah. It's not good. You are listening to Irene Dunn in Citizen Mama on the Cavalcade of America. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Mama didn't tell us then about her visit to the Naturalization Bureau. And she didn't say any more about Papa becoming a citizen. But she began acting more and more mysteriously. Three nights a week, she went out by herself. Oh, that folk song is fine peace catching. It makes me think of Norway. Is Norway beautiful, Papa? Yeah, if you like mountains. Is Mama home yet? Dagmar, you ought to be in bed. Mama said I could stay up till she got home. Yoo-hoo! Oh, here's Mama now. Hello. Oh, it's 
not Mama. It's Aunt Jenny. Hello, Aunt Jenny. Hello, Aunt Jenny. Hello, girls. Hello, Hansen. Hello, Jenny. I stopped by to get Martha's recipe for angel cake. Hers uses one less egg than mine. Oh, she's not home yet, Jenny. Oh? What is Martha doing out at night? She's at Aunt Trina's. Trina's? Yeah, three nights a week she goes now and helps Trina sew clothes for the new baby coming. Martha is not at Trina's. I was just there. And Mama's not there? No, nor has Trina seen her for two whole weeks, she said. She was there the night before last. Hmm, that is what Martha says. Where else would she be? If my husband was alive and I went out three nights a week, my husband would certainly ask me where I went. Why would she say Trina's if she was going some other place? All I know, she is not the Trina's. I was there. Hello? Is Nils home from the Boy Scout yet? Oh, Jenny. Hello, Mama. Well, does no one else say hello? Where have you been, Martha? Jenny was at Trina's. Said you were not there. And where did you say I was, Jenny? I said I was at Trina's and you was not there. That's all. In other words, I tell lie. I said no such thing. Well, I did tell lie. Martha. So, I have not been at Trina's tonight or any night lately. Well, ask her where she has been, Lars. I will not, Jenny. It's Martha's own business where she goes. Well, don't you want to know, Lars? If you want to tell. I've been to school. School? School, Mama. I told Fib so you would not laugh at me like you did Papa. But why'd you go, Mama? So Papa would not have to. They teach me to be the citizen and I teach it all to Papa. It's good, Papa. <laughs> Every evening for the next few weeks, Mama taught Papa the things she had learned in the naturalization class at the night school. Now, Lars, what three branches is the United States government divided into? The executive. Good. The legislative. Good. And the... You? You? Judicial. It's very good, Papa. We were all so very helpful. But as I look back on those days, I wonder if Papa didn't secretly regret that he hadn't gone to the night school. But he studied very hard, and the whole family was proud of the progress he made. I bet you get a hundred when you take your examination, Papa. <laughs> Don't get so excited you forget to eat your supper, Dagmar. Oh, fat shed. <laughs> you know what I told Tommy, Papa? I told him that I bet you knew just as much about the government as the president, practically. <laughs> Maybe only as much as Vice President Dagmar. <laughs> when do you have to see the examiner, Papa? Well, last week, Mama helped me fill out the paper, and we sent it in, Catherine. Then they write the letter when they want. Oh, do you think it'll be soon, Papa? Oh, it's most likely, yeah. Gee, I get scared just thinking about it. What's there to be scared of? It can't be so hard to be a citizen. Look at them all. Papa knows every question that the examiner might ask him. You will see. Oh, if only I can say what I know. Oh, you will, Papa. Sure you will. Here's the doorbell. Park it. I'll go, I'll go. Now, notice the damn dog, huh? Nils will go. Yes, Mama. Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was a lawyer telling us we'd been left a fortune by a long-lost uncle? Yeah, he's more likely to be the paper boy wanting his money for last week. Who is it, Nils? A letter for Papa. It's from the Naturalization Bureau. Nat Here, Papa. Oh, Thank you, Nils. Oh, what's it say, Papa? Well, yeah. Just a minute. Give him time to get it open, can't you? Yeah. I'm all tongues, Martha. Yeah. Well, well, Lars? On 25 of this month, yeah. I'm to go to Naturalization Bureau and see examiner. The 25th is only three days yeah, off. It's good. Sooner is the better. Oh, but golly. Come on now, girls. It's time to clear the table. All right, Mama. Papa's going to pass it. Yeah, yeah, Dagmar. Come, Catherine. Oh, yes, Mama. You'd think they'd give more than three days' notice. Papa? Yes, Niels? There's a thing the fellows at high school do sometimes when they're... they're scared about an exam. Well? They... they write the answers on their cuff. Do you do that, Niels? Oh, no, Papa. That would be cheating. If you don't do it, Niels, I don't do it either. 
I just wanted to help, Papa. You are a good boy, Nevis. I'll always, always remember the day that Papa saw the examiner. We were all there with him. Papa wanted us to be. Uncle Chris and Mama's sister Jenny were there, too. They were character witnesses. Why is Lars so pale? Is he maybe catching something? Lars is catching cold feet. <laughs> Uncle Chris, please. There's no need to be afraid, Mart. I fix everything for Lars. Lars Hansen. Is Lars Hansen here? Yeah, here. He's right here. Come forward with your witness, please. Oh, now, Lars. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Which of you is applying for citizenship? My nephew-in-law here. I am witness for him. I am also witness. I am Christopher Halverson, 17-year citizen of this country. My nephew-in-law will make first-class citizen. Are you in it? Well, yeah. He'll yeah. be one of best citizens. I swear all time that one of very best citizen. So you make him citizen now, huh? I'll have to ask the applicants some questions before I can make any recommendations. Questions? Well, what is use of questions? He'll make good citizen. I know him. That alone is not sufficient, sir. Why not? I am head of family. I'll have to ask you to let me get on with the examination, sir. But I am with And when I need your information, I'll ask for it. Meanwhile, I think you'd better stand over there. You do as the man says, Uncle Chris. Yeah, it was not like this when I became citizen. Now, you are Lars Hansen? Are you Lars Hansen, I said. He is, yeah. I am Mrs. Hansen. Uh, let the applicant answer his own questions, please. One of the purposes of this examination is to find out how well he speaks English. Oh, his English is fine. No interruptions, please. Now, according to this application, you've been in this country 16 years. Is that correct, Mr. Hansen? Is it? Please answer aloud instead of nodding, Mr. Hansen. That's the only way I can tell anything about your English. Do you understand me? No, no, out loud. Say something, anything. Tell me why you want to become a citizen, for instance. Why do you want to become a citizen, Mr. Hansen? Tell me. Papa just stood there, trying to get up courage to speak. He looked more and more helpless and miserable. And the examiner's face took on a very doubtful expression. And then the strangest thing happened. Mama began to hum that little Norwegian folk song I play. Then Papa looked over at Mama, and he smiled. And then he turned back to the examiner. I want to be the citizen because my wife wants it. My children want it. And I want it. The whole family wants it. Very much. That's a very good answer, Mr. Hansen. Of course, there was more to the examination than that. Papa was good on some of it and bad on some of it. Just enough to leave us in suspense for a whole month. <laughs> Then one day, Papa got word to come to the final hearing. And now the oath of allegiance, Mr. Hanson. Oh, one question, please. Certainly. When I become the citizen, my wife does too, so? That is correct. Then may my wife take oath of allegiance now at the same time with me? She may. Read it, please. Mother. I, I hereby, hereby declare, declare on, oath on oath that I absolutely, absolutely and entirely renounce and impure all allegiance, allegiance and fidelity, and fidelity to any foreign 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 So Mama and Papa stood there hand in hand and said the oath. And I think we were almost as proud of them as they were of each other. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I, I take, take this obligation freely, without, without any, any mental reservation or purpose, purpose of evasion. So help me, God. And that 
That's how Mama and Papa became citizens. And what I remember most about the whole thing is Mama's last question to the judge. Mr. Judge, to be the citizen, have I paper to sign or anything? Not a thing, Mrs. Hanson. You women have it easy. Mama just smiled. Now, Bill Hamilton speaking for DuPont. This evening's Cavalcade broadcast has come to you from the city of Buffalo in New York State. Here in Buffalo, just 25 years ago, the DuPont Company built a plant which was to change the buying habits of a nation. Its product, scarcely known then, was a tough, transparent film invented by a Swiss chemist who hoped to make a stain-proof tablecloth. The film was costly to make, but the DuPont Company was willing to risk capital for the plant. It was a chance, but the DuPont management believed the new chemical film might have far-reaching use. It might provide new standards of convenience and cleanliness. It might prove to be a better thing for better living through chemistry. The name of the product, as you have probably guessed, was and is DuPont cellophane. The costs of manufacturing the first cellophane the DuPont company produced in America were such that it had to sell at a price of $2.65 a pound. It was used in a limited way, mainly for wrapping candy boxes. But more and more capital was poured into the venture. In DuPont laboratories and in the plant itself, chemists, engineers, and other technologists were hard at work. The first great result of this team of investment and research was a cellophane film that was moisture-proof, that would not let moisture in or out. Keeping the film's transparency and flexibility, the technologists went on to improve it in other ways. They perfected films which could flow swiftly through wrapping machines, films which actually controlled the amount of moisture passing through them, films which could be sealed by the touch of a hot iron. Today, this Buffalo plant is one of four DuPont cellophane plants, employing, all told, nearly 5,000 highly skilled people. More than 50 different types of cellophane developed by DuPont are now in use in more than 5,000 different ways. And through the continuing effort of DuPont men and women in laboratory and plant, production has been made more efficient, output constantly increased. Today, on cellophane's 25th birthday, a much-improved cellophane sells at an average price of 48 cents a pound, as compared with the original price of $2.65. Quite a number of men and women from the Buffalo plant are in our Cavalcade studio audience this evening. Together with the people in the other plants, they can justly feel that as part of this team effort, they have made an important contribution to the living standard of America. They have helped to create jobs for themselves and others. They have helped to bring success to hundreds of small businesses all over the country whose products gained wider acceptance through improved packaging. In 25 years, cellophane has established a record of real service to industry and to the public. Cellophane, the transparent film that shows what it protects and protects what it shows, is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight's cavalcade play, Citizen Mama, was written by Frank Gabrielson. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Be sure to listen next week when Cavalcade presents a colorful and thrilling romance of the South, Dinner at Belmont, starring Janet Blair, Arthur Kennedy, and Marjorie Maud. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller and came to you tonight from Kleinhans Music Hall in Buffalo, New York, and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.